general results for eigenvalues and eigenvectors and eigenspace. So from 7.1 we have now added the eigenspace. So we have three things, lambda, v, and e for eigenspace. Definition. Let A be an n by n matrix. For a given eigenvalue lambda i, let E sub i be the set of all vectors v satisfying A v equals lambda i v. Then E, or actually it should be E sub i, is called the eigenspace of A corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda i. This E sub i is the solution set to the linear system A minus lambda i times V equals zero. Here's an example. Determine all eigen spaces and their dimensions for the matrix A as listed, which is a three by three. From 7.1, we know what to do. We find the determinant of A minus lambda i and the determinant becomes as follows. Negative lambda minus two to the second multiplied by lambda minus three. So we have two lambdas. First lambda is two and the second lambda is three, but the first lambda is repeated twice. Lambda one equals two with multiplicity two. We work on that, we go back and finish the work like 7.1. Three minus two, two minus two, two minus two. So it's gonna end up one, zero, zero, and the rest stays the same. We look for the determinant of that and we'll move on. So we know what to do. As I mentioned, one, zero, zero. Adding the zeros on the right, that's called the augmented matrix for a minus lambda i v equals zero. Now, if you wanna cancel this and make this zero times one and go down, this is gonna cancel. So we end up with one step with a reduced row echelon form. One, negative one, zero, zero. Last time I mentioned when you have a zero to be careful and here it happens again. So we have x1 minus x2, if you call them x1, x2 for the convenience, plus 0x3 equals zero. Now x3 could be any value, not just zero. I mentioned last time five and seven, you could just plug in five here, it's gonna make it valid, seven, anything will make this statement true. So x3 does not have to be zero only. It's a free variable. Be careful with that. So as I mentioned, x3 is being called s and these two will give you x1 minus x2 equals zero, which is same as x1 equals x2 after you move x2 to the other side. So uh, x1 and x2 are equal. x3 is a free variable. One more time, just be careful. All right. Factoring out r and s as we started a way back in chapter four, we get two vectors. So lambda two gave me two vectors. I know it's repeated twice and sometimes I get that from students that if it repeated twice, is that gonna give you two vectors? Well, no, not really. That depends on what you end up with a reduced rotation form. It depends. So the eigenspace, now this is something in 7.2 that was not mentioned in 7.1. The eigenspace corresponding to lambda one equals two is written as E sub one equals v that belongs to r to the third such that the vector v is as we mentioned right here r times 1 1 0 plus s times 0 0 1 where r and s are scalars in short we use the word span 
span 110001. The dimension of E1, the eigenspace E1, that corresponds to lambda 1, is 2 because we have two vectors. Lambda 1 equals 2. N1 corresponds to lambda 1. The size of E sub 1 is 2. All right? I think that's clear now. We have lambda 1. Gave me two vectors. The span of these two vectors is being called an eigenspace E1. The size is 2, but we called it N1 because it relates to or corresponds to lambda 1. Let's go for the second lambda which is 3. So lambda 2 equals 3, we do the same thing. A minus lambda 2i, so we subtract 3 from the first, uh, the main diagonal, and we end up with the following. Simplifying, moving the negative 1 from down all the way to the top, and we end up with the following. Multiplying the first row by negative 1 and the second row by negative 1. So we could also change this to positive 1. We have the following. Multiplying the second row by negative 1. Sorry, by 1. So I could go after this negative one and after this negative one to cancel them and change them to zero. I end up with the following. And I think we're done simplifying. So this is called the Roshan form. We have the leading ones in the first column and the second column. This reads using x1 and x2 and x3, x1 plus x3 equals 0 and from the second row x2 equals 0 that's not like the previous example so that's normal which means x2 equals 0 is not a free variable now notice that x1 plus x3 equals 0 which means x3 is the opposite of x1 so if you call x1 the free variable t we end up with the following x3 will be the opposite which is negative t factoring t out will get the vector 1 0 negative 1 So what is E2? The eigenspace corresponding to this lambda, lambda 2, which is 3, is E2, or E sub 2, equals V that belongs to R to the third, because we are in R to the third, such that V is T multiplied by 1, 0, negative 1, which is called the span of the vector 1, 0, negative 1. And this is the basis for E sub 2. So the dimension of E sub 2 is 1, and that is n2 equals 1. So for lambda 2 equals 3, E2 is the span of 1, 0, negative 1. The size or the dimension of E2 is called n2, which is 1. So lambda 1 gave me two vectors, and lambda 2 gave me one vector, and which means I have everything and it's not defective. Note, lambda 2 equals 3, meaning x1 plus x3 equals 0, and x2 equals 0. Well, if you let x3 equals t instead of x1, 
you end up with the following minus t zero t instead of the previous page was written as t and zero as negative t which is fine so e2 in this case is negative one zero one as the basis compared to this page which is one zero negative one they're both the same if you graph it's the same line another comment notice that negative one zero one is a scalar multiply of negative one times one zero negative one so either vector will do I get those questions sometimes from students that what about if I do this is this still true yes it's true uh, for example the victor 1 1 let's say if it's in the solution key for a problem and a student writes 2 2 that is still the same thing notice when you graph 1 1 as a vector and you span or use the spanning that's gonna give you a line that makes 45 degrees through the origin and going through 1 1 so if somebody else writes 2 2 instead of 1 1 that's still the same spanning set same solution set which is a line making 45 degree uh, with the origin from the origin with the x-axis all right summary so this is our a we came up with two lambdas lambda equals 2 and lambda equals 3 for lambda equals 2 lambda 1 equals 2 with multiplicity of 2 we came up with two vectors 1 1 0 0 0 1 so n 1 equals 2 when lambda 2 was 3 we came up with one vector which is 1 0 1 so the dimension of e sub 2 equals 1 that is n2 equals 1 so if you add n2 and n1 you end up with 2 plus 1 that adds up to 3 which is the same as the size of this matrix so we call it non-defective so we have a complete set of eigenvectors so this matrix a is non-defective hopefully this summary helps a lot to summarize the whole problem in one page let's take another example determine whether a which is 4 negative 1 1 2 is a defective or not we're going to do the same find lambdas find v's and if we don't have enough vectors we call it non-defective in this case n equals 2 so if we end up with two vectors non-defective if we end up with less than two vectors it's going to be defective p of lambda or the determinant this is a polynomial of lambda of a minus lambda i ends up lambda minus 3 to the second so we have a lambda equals 3 repeated twice putting this lambda equals 3 into the matrix we get 4 minus 3 and 2 minus 3 and that gives me 4 minus 3 which is 1 2 minus 3 which is negative 1 and this diagonal stays the same zeros on the right called the augmented matrix simplifying that's quick multiply by negative 1 and go down and you get just 1x 1 minus 1x2 equals 0 which is r and r take r as a common factor out you get the vector 1 1 so the eigenspace corresponding to lambda 1 equals 3 is written for you as e sub 1 equals v that belongs to r to the third 
such that v equals r times 1 and 1, where r is a scalar. That's the span of the vector 1, 1. So the dimension of the eigenspace E sub 1 is just 1. That's less than 2 that we, we are looking for. So A is defective. We're almost done. So to summarize this, make sure that you know how to def determine if it's defective or not. I gave you two clear examples, but this section was focused on the eigenspace and that should do it. N is two, we have one vector total and that determines that A is defective. Thank you for watching. I hope that it was helpful. Hit the like button if you do like it. Subscribe, comment below. And if you like this video, hit the bell icon to be notified when I upload new ones. Um, planning to upload 7.3 and 7.4 within a week. Uh, hopefully soon. Okay. Until next time, peace. Jabber time.